how is Israel reacting? Because we have seen significant pushback against the ceasefire because they don't want to they don't want Hamas to be able to recoup the losses. Exactly and the foreign minister is out with extremely strong comments to the effect that Israel is not backing down. Netanyahu as well while admitting to being heartbroken over the loss of some hostages to IDF bullets is also vehemently opposing and pushing back this international diplomatic and honestly domestic pressure as well. So at the weekend we saw a joint letter to Britain's Sunday Times from the UK Foreign Minister David Cameron and his German counterpart using this sustainable ceasefire phrase. Now they define that as a peace lasting for days, years, generations, saying Israel will not win this war if the operations destroy the prospect of peaceful Palestinian coexistence. That's important. So they're putting out there sort of a framework for what might happen. They do say in this editorial that Israel has a right to eliminate the threat posed by Hamas, but too many civilians have been killed, and that's a direct quote. Now, you mentioned France's foreign minister. She called for an immediate and durable truce, and that call came in the wake of a bad loss for Israel. One of France's diplomats died from injuries sustained during Israeli bombing in Rafah at the south end of the Gaza Strip. And, of course, we know that those three hostages that were shot by the IDF Friday had emerged shirtless from a building in a neighborhood of northern Gaza. They were holding a makeshift white flag, and one had shouted help in Hebrew before they were shot by IDF forces. The IDF revealed all this on Saturday. Nevertheless, Netanyahu has vowed to press on. The pressure had already been mounting interior to Israel because there had been no new prisoner exchange deal and no movement on that two weeks after that week-long ceasefire had ended. So you saw that quote there from the foreign ministry, Guy Cohen, saying, any call for a ceasefire with Hamas is a prize for terrorism and we won't agree to it. But I will say that pressure is likely to continue. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is beginning a visit to not just Israel but also Bahrain and Qatar to work on defense capabilities. Washington very concerned about attacks in the Red Sea but also very concerned that Israel continue to have this pressure mounted upon it to exercise maybe more surgical approaches to this war. Vonnie, have there been any developments on the prisoner for hostage exchanges? Essentially, not yet that we know of, except for the fact that we have one-on-one -on -one meetings now, a meeting between the intelligence head of Mossad, the Israeli intelligence head, and the Prime Minister of Qatar, and that took place in Europe at an undisclosed location. Very few details emerging, but we do know that progress has been made according to Israeli media. Very little progress and very slow progress, but it's better than nothing, because remember, Paul, Israel's negotiating team was ordered to return from Qatar about more than two weeks ago now, and that was the team which had brokered the earlier exchanges more than two weeks ago. So this shift to one-on-one -on -one talks is at least the door nudging open just a little bit. Remember, 129 people taken in the October raids by Hamas are estimated to be still held in Gaza. And this is 70 days after their capture. And this is including those hostages that were killed and also all of the hostages that had already been exchanged for uh, Palestinian prisoners. So there are still 129, hopefully, alive and in Gaza and potentially releasable.